This is a video tutorial based on Chapter 3 of the Unix Workbench uh, online tutorial, but tailored for our Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I'm going to walk through this, um, and you can pause as we go. But the first step here is to open up the terminal, and the easiest way to do that in the Raspberry Pi is to click on the terminal icon here. And there is our Raspberry Pi terminal. Um, so this is our also called our shell. Um, and so there's a couple things here at the beginning that's worth pointing out. Uh, and the first part is the prompt here. And so just to explain what this what this means, um, here's the prompt. Pi is the username that I'm currently logged into. That's the default username on the Raspberry Pi. The at symbol, um, what is after the at symbol is the name of the computer. And so this computer is named Raspberry Pi. Um, and you can change both of those if you are, you are so inclined. Every If I press enter, you'll see the prompt repeated over and over again. A couple other things I want to show you about the prompt, and I'll zoom in a little bit here. Um, the dollar sign character basically is, is where you start typing. Um, if you see the dollar sign character displayed, um, that's like not something you type in. That's just showing you this is something that's typed at the prompt. That's a common source of, of confusion based on different tutorials. The tilde character here um, represents my current working directory, and tilde means my home directory. Um, it's a shortcut for the home directory, so that's what that part means in the prompt as well. Um, Let's see. Uh, so let's learn our first command here looking through the tutorial. So the first command is clear. So I just type clear and I press the enter key um, and it clears the terminal window. And I'm back to a single prompt at the top. Um, and, and just to be clear, like um, clear is the command. And in general, when you type a command at the terminal, uh, you also have the option to, to specify uh, the ability to specify some options and arguments, um, and we're going to learn more about those those later. Um, but clear doesn't really have any of those. Um, so let's look at our second command. Um, for our second command, let's use the echo command. And so let's type echo space single quote hello world single quote and then press enter. And we can see that what was within the single quotes is now um, printed, echoed um, to the terminal. And we can see that as well. In this case, the single quoted hello world um, is the argument passed to the echo command. So um, here is a super handy tip. Uh, you can use the arrow keys to scroll through your command history. So if I hit the up arrow key once, I'll see the echo command. If I hit it a second time, I'll see the clear command. If I press the down arrow key again, I'm back to the echo command. Um, so that can help you uh, significantly. You can even hit like the up arrow key and then the left arrow key to change um, the command. Perhaps you made a, a typo or something and want to change it. That can save you a lot of time. All right. So there are two exercises for you to try at this point. One is for you to print your name to the terminal. And then the second is for you to clear your terminal after completing that first exercise. So go ahead and pause the video. And when you're done with that, start it up again. All right, so we learned our first two command line commands, clear and echo. Um, before we jump into more commands, we're going to focus a little bit on the file system. Um, the file system on our Raspberry Pi and, and Linux in general is, is similar perhaps to file systems you might be familiar with on your Chromebook or a Windows or a Mac computer. Um, we'll use the term, uh, basically it's a collection of files and, and folders. We use the term directory interchangeably with folder. Um, so you'll I'll probably end up using both, and you'll see both referenced in various tutorials and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to click on the uh, file manager icon here in the toolbar, 
and that's going to launch the Raspberry Pi file manager. And by default, I'm in my home directory, which on the Raspberry Pi and, and most Linux systems um, is slash home slash pi. So all the user directories are inside of the home directory. Um, and the shortcut for this is, is tilde. Um, and you can see that uh, there are several different folders in here um, as, as part of my, my library. Um, so let's take example, let's look at an example of like my GitHub folder. So if I double click on my GitHub folder, we can see that I have two folders inside of that, a sandbox and SE tick. And if we look over here in the sidebar, we can start to see the folder hierarchy a little bit better. Um, here's our home folder, um, our Pi folder, which is our home directory, our GitHub folder, and inside of that, the sandbox and SE tick folders. Um, and what's implied here, let me scroll up a little bit, it's not implied, it's explicit, um, is the root of our file system is just slash, okay? So this is the root of our file system. And so with that, we can specify um, what's called the, the complete um, path uh, to like my GitHub directory, slash home, slash pi, slash GitHub, well, is a fully specified path um, to my GitHub directory. Um, and do remember, if I type in tilde up here, tilde is a shortcut for slash home slash pi. Um, so that can be convenient as well. Um, all right, so that's, that's what we've got for our path. Um, so let's switch back to our terminal here. We're gonna do a little bit more with the file system here. And let's learn a new command which is PWD, and PWD stands for print working directory. The working directory is the directory that um, we are currently in, in the terminal. Um, it is also specified right here with the tilde, um, but it will print out the fully qualified path here of slash home slash pi. Um, and so that's um, our working directory. Um, also note that if at any time you want to jump to the working directory, you can use the cd command. The cd command stands for change directory. If you type the cd command without any arguments, it will put you back in your home directory. So that's a nice shortcut to get back into the home directory. Um, now, if we want to, uh, but we can also use the change directory command to go to other directories, which we'll do in just a moment. Um, and we can do either relative to our current directory or we can do absolute paths and we'll see that um, as well. But first, before we try to move around our file system here, let's learn one more command, which is the ls command, um, which lists the files and folders within the current directory. So if I type ls and press enter, we can see um, the files and folders. You'll note that the way that the terminal is set up by default on the Raspberry Pi, folders are colored in this uh, blue um, and files are in, in white. And so just by the color, we can tell if something is a file um, or a folder. So we can see um, all the folders in my current directory. Now let's use the CD command to change into my GitHub directory. So CD space GitHub. Um, here's a shortcut, is that if you start typing the name of a file or folder and then press the tab key, um, the terminal will complete it um, if it's clear which one you mean. If it's not clear, um, it, it won't know which one to pick, but if you press the tab key twice, it will show you all your options to help you out. So there, I've changed into the GitHub directory. And what you'll notice now is that the current working directory is tilde slash GitHub and shows that I've changed into the GitHub directory. Um, I can confirm that with the PWD command. And sure enough, slash home slash pi slash GitHub. And I can see where I am. Um, a little bit of terminology here. When I did CD GitHub, um, I specified a relative path. So because this didn't start with a slash character, I said, based on where I currently am, change into the GitHub directory. Um, 
And so uh, that's the relative path can be a lot more convenient than always specifying absolute paths. Um, another relative path that is handy is dot dot. So if I do cd space dot dot, dot dot means change directory to the parent directory up one level in our directory tree. And you can see that I'm back in my slash home slash pi directory. Um, another kind of special symbol um, is the single dot, the single period, which means the current working directory. So another way of changing into the GitHub directory would be cd dot slash GitHub. Um, and that is also a relative path saying starting from the current directory, change into GitHub. Um, both of these cd commands are equivalent. And you can see I'm in my GitHub directory. Um, I could also do a absolute path. I could say cd slash home slash pi slash github and that too will get me into my github directory um, so several different different ways to do it um, and they all they all work okay um, back to the tab thing um, here let me go back to my home directory um, so if i do cd capital d um, as you can see, I have several folders that start with a capital letter D. If I press tab, nothing happens. But if I press it again, it will list all of those folders that match um, what I've typed so far. That is, they start with a capital letter D. Um, so I can see I can go into desktop documents or downloads. Um, and then I can start typing and hit tab again to fully complete it. Um, so the tab command can save you a huge amount of time. Um, all right, so we did a bunch there in a short period of time. Uh, we talked about relative and absolute paths. We talked about the root directory, which is the slash character. We talked about the home directory, where we can use the tilde as a shortcut. We talked about the concept of a um, current working directory within the terminal. We learned the cd, change directory command. We learned the pwd, print working directory command we learned the ls list uh, files and folders command. All right, now I've got four exercises um, for you to do. Uh, so I want you to set your working directory to the root directory. That's number one. Then I want you to set your working directory to your home directory um, using three different commands. Um, and then I want you to uh, Find a folder on your computer using your file and folder browser, and then set your working directory to that folder using the terminal, help you connect the graphical user interface to the terminal, um, and then list all the files in whatever directory you navigate it to in number three. Um, so go ahead and pause the video, do those four exercises, and then unpause it when you are done. All right, um, so for those four exercises, I should probably just show you how they how they work. Setting my, let me clear this out. Setting my directory to the root directory would be cd slash, and now I'm at the root directory. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of different folders there. We're not gonna worry so much about those yet. Um, set your working directory to your home directory using three different commands. Well, I can just do cd, and that takes me to my home directory. I can do cd tilde, and that takes me to my home directory. And I can do an absolute path, cd home slash pi, and that takes me to my home directory. All three of those um, are equivalent. Um, and so I guess for number three, it's, it's kind of like what I already did. I could choose my GitHub directory um, as the directory I want to go to. And then I can list the files and folders in there to see the sandbox and yes, e tick folder. Um, so that's how we do the exercises from part two here. All right, so moving on to part three, um, let's learn how to actually uh, 
manipulate these these folders and files. Um, and so let's go back to the home directory and list the contents of it. Um, and then let's create a new directory um, that will store some other stuff. And the command we use for that is mkdir, make directory. And let's create one called code. Um, I'm just doing this uh, similarly to the online tutorial. And then I'll type ls, and I can now see that there is a code um, folder created here. And you may have noticed when I did the make directory command, the code folder also appeared in the graphical user interface. Um, with the mkdir command, the make directory command, I specified a relative path. Um, you could certainly specify an absolute path as well. In general, all commands take either relative or absolute paths. Um, so um, another command we're going to learn is one that we can use to create a new empty file. Um, and probably the easiest way to do that is the touch command. So I can use the touch command and press space. Um, and then let's say I'm making a new journal. So I'll type in journal and I'll type in today's date. And a .txt extension showing that it's just a text file. Um, and then I'll do ls. And sure enough, we'll see that there is now this text file here. Um, the touch command will create a new file if one doesn't exist. If one does exist, it will just change the last modified date to the current day and time. Um, so that's what it means by touch, like you've touched the file and it, it shows that it has been changed. All right. Um, so this is, we've been using the ls command for a bit. Sometimes we want a bit more information from the ls command, and this is where we can use arguments. Um, and arguments usually start with either a single or a double um, hyphen, dash, minus sign thing. And so if I do ls space dash l, it will print more information about the files and folders um, in the current working directory. Um, and we can see things like um, a, a bunch of different stuff. Um, these are the permissions for the files, um, but the first letter specifies whether it's a directory or a file. So if there's a D there, it's a directory. If there is not, it is a file. Um, and so we'll focus on permissions later. Um, but we can also see who, uh, who owns the file. We can see the size of the file. We can see when the file was last modified, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, all right, so let's look at another file then. All right, let's change into my GitHub directory and my se tick directory. And there's several files in here. Um, the next command we wanna do is the WC command, which stands for word count. I can see how many words are in my requirements.txt file. So I'll type req and hit tab and it will complete it. And I can see that I have um, so many uh, lines, words, and characters. Um, so number of lines, number of words, number of characters. All right, um, I can also use the cat command, C-A-T command, um, to display the contents of requirements.txt. And there's the contents of requirements.txt. And we can see all of those um, as well. Um, cat is, is short for concatenate. Um, it's often meant to put multiple files together, um, but we're not going to worry about that so much right at this instant. Um, let's also do a word count for my Docker file. Um, and then concatenate that as well. All right, and you can see there's another example. So it just shows the contents of the text file. Um, 
which works out pretty well. Um, all right, but what happens if we have a larger file? So if I look at this Python script called envmonitor.py, we can see there's 46 lines in it. And if I concatenate that, um, it, it you know more than fills my screen. I have to scroll here to see the rest of it, um, which is fine, um, but they can be a little bit inconvenient. Um, so another command that we often use um, is the less command. So I can use less and then specify the name of a file, and it will display one page of the file on my terminal. Um, and I can use my up and down arrow keys to scroll through the file. That's very convenient. Um, I can go use spacebar to go to the entire next page. I can use the B key to, B key to go back a page. Um, and then when I'm all done, I can hit the Q key. Um, note, when we run the less command, it's a little bit different than the other commands that we've run because we enter a new program. We're not at our prompt anymore. We're inside of the less program and we use different keys um, to navigate within that program. And then when we're done, we uh, quit it. Um, so less works really well for interactively scrolling through a file. Often we're just interested in the very beginning or the very end of a file. And so if we want to see just the beginning of a file, we can use the head command and it will display the first few lines of the file. Um, and if we're interested just in the very end of the file, and we often do this with log files, we use the tail command and it displays just the final few lines of the program or of the file. So head and tail are two additional programs as well. Um, and so uh, we can actually specify the number of lines. Let's say I could do head dash N. Let's say I only want four lines. And then I specify my name of the file and I'm gonna get exactly four lines um, with the head command. So here is a good example of arguments um, and parameters to a command. So head is the command, dash N is the argument, specify an option, it's followed by a four saying I want four, the number of lines I want is four. And then here is the argument, the name of the file to display, envmonitor.py. All right, so lots of, uh, lots of commands that we've done so far. Um, so we did the touch command originally. Um, let's go back to my home directory. So we did the touch command to create this journal. Another way of creating a new file um, is based on the echo command. So you may um, remember from previously uh, that we can use echo and specify something to echo. And here I use double quotes because I have a single quote within my string I'm echoing, and that will print it out in the terminal. Um, I can also use the echo command and do what's called redirection. So by putting the greater than symbol here, I'm saying take the output of this command Instead of by default directing it to the terminal, redirect it to this file. Um, and if this file doesn't exist, create it. And if it does exist, overwrite it. And so let's do the ls command. And sure enough, there is echo out dot text. And sure enough, its content says I'm in the file. Um, another redirection command we can do is I can say I have been appended. I can use two greater than symbols. Um, and this means uh, don't overwrite the file, but rather append the, to the file. And then I can use my up arrow key to do the cat command again. And I can see that now the file has both lines in it. Um, now just, you know, be careful with this. If I make a typo, the terminal is not very forgiving. If I say a third line and I only have a single greater than symbol and not the double, um, it will not append because I didn't use two greater than symbols and instead will replace and now there's only a single line in my file. Um, there's not an undo. <laughs> um, 
And so you need to be extra careful when you're working in the terminal. Um, you can like completely destroy your operating system if you're not careful. Um, one thing that's very common to do and that we do a lot um, is edit files. And so you're familiar with using BlueJ to edit files, um, which you know we can do on, on Linux, um, but we can also use the terminal directly to, to edit files. And there's several different ones out there. Um, and there's groups of people that are very passionate about their choice of editors. Um, but we're going to focus on one called Nano. Um, so I'm going to say Nano space um, journal. And this brings up a new program. This is Nano. Um, and it's a basic text editor. Um, for most of what we need to do, this is going to work just fine. Um, so I can just start typing a journal entry if I want. I can say 2021, August, oops, actually, let's say uh, 15 August 2021. And I can say created video tutorial based on the Linux workbench chapter three. And then I can go on from there if I want. Um, at the bottom of this window are various commands that can be used um, within this nano text editor. Um, this little caret symbol um, means control. So these are all commands that we do by hitting control and some other letter. Um, so for example, if I want to write out this file, I can do control O. So control O. Um, prompts me for the file name to write. I'll keep it the same. I'll just hit enter and it writes it. Um, when all is said and done, um, I can do uh, control X and that exits from nano and puts me back in the terminal. So let's run the cat command on the journal file again. And sure enough, there is the entry I made inside of nano. Um, all right, we used a bunch of stuff. We used the mkdir command and the touch command. We used the greater than symbol to redirect to a file. We used the double greater than to append to a file. We learned about cat and wc and head and tail and less and nano. All right, so now there are several exercises I want you to complete for practice. Um, Number one, you're going to create a new directory called workbench in your home directory. Then without changing directories, create a file called readme.txt inside of workbench. I haven't shown you exactly how to do that, but I think you could figure that out. I want you to append the numbers one, two, and three to readme.txt so that each number appears on its own line. I want you to print readme.txt to the terminal. Um, I want you to use output redirection to create a new file in the workbench directory called list.txt, which lists the files and folders in your home directory. Again, I haven't shown you ex explicitly how to do that, but you now have all the tools you can put together um, to accomplish that. And then finally, find out how many characters are in list.txt without opening the file or printing it to the command line. So go ahead and pause the video and work through those exercises. And when you want to uh, check your approach, go ahead and unpause. All right, so let's go through these exercises together. Um, I'm back in my home directory. And so I'm gonna make a new directory called workbench. There we go. Um, I'm now gonna, without changing directories, I'm gonna create a file called readme.txt inside of workbench. So I'm gonna use the touch command to do this. And I'm gonna specify a relative path to readme.txt. So I want it inside the workbench folder and then slash readme.txt. There we go. And if I scroll over here, we can see that inside the workbench folder is in fact readme.txt. So that's pretty cool. All right, 
append the numbers one, two, and three so that each number appears on its own line. So I can say echo one. To workbench read me that text. And then I'm going to hit the up arrow and arrow over and delete the one and type the two. And do it again for the three. There we go. And then I'm going to concatenate readme.txt. And sure enough, I've got one, two, three. All right, fifth exercise is to use output redirection to create a new file in the workbench directory called list.txt, which lists the files and folders in your home directory. So I know the ls command lists the files and folders in my home directory, but I don't want to display those in the terminal. I want to redirect them to the file list.txt inside the workbench folder. And sure enough, I can redirect the output of any command, um, not just the echo command. Um, find out how many characters are in list.txt, no problem. I got my wc, word count command, and I'm told I have 143 characters. There we go. Those are the extra exercises for part three. All right, our final part is part four here. Um, so let me clear this out and type ls again. There's all the contents of our home directory. Um, and so we're going to clean things up a little bit. We're going to learn a little bit more about that. Um, I'm going to eventually have many journal files and I don't want them all kind of cluttering my home directory. So I'm going to make a journal folder, mkdir journal. You can see that it's created right here. Um, and then I want to move the journal text file I've already created into this new folder. And so we move a file by using the mv command. The first argument is the name of the text file. And the second argument is where we want it. So move the file journal-2021-0815 into the folder journal. And when I do so, show you in the GUI as well. The journal text file is now inside of the journal folder. And I'll list the files here as well to show that journal is no longer there. Um, maybe a better place to put the journal folder is to actually put it inside the documents folder with other documents. And so the MV command can be used not just to move folders, but also to move or not just to move files, but also to move folders. Oop, I forgot the V. There we go. So I moved journal into documents. And so sure enough, if I open up documents, we can see that journal is inside of there now. I can list my commands and show that there's no longer a journal folder here at all. Uh, let's do ls documents and sure enough also show in the terminal that journal is inside of um, the documents folder. All right, um, other things we can do. Um, we can use the mv command to not only move a file, but also to rename it. So we had this file echo out.txt. Um, I'm going to rename that. So I'm going to use mv echo out.txt and I'm going to call it echo demo.txt instead. And sure enough, the file name has changed. So the mv can be used to um, rename a file or folder as well. Um, Let's learn another command, which is very helpful. And that is the CP command, which is short for copy. Um, so I'm going to copy this echo demo file um, to my desktop with the CP command. Now, when I do that, you'll note that if I do the LS, echo demo is still in my home directory. But now it is also 
in my desktop directory, there's now two copies of that file. Um, one really important option is that when we use the CP command, it copies just like a single file. If you actually want to copy an entire folder, like you would do if you like drag and dropped a folder um, within the um, file manager here, or copy and pasted a folder within the file manager here, uh, you do need to specify a different option. So that is the dash R command. Dash R is short for recursive, meaning copy this folder and everything inside of it to the new location. So I could copy my documents folder into my desktop folder. And then if I list the contents of the desktop folder, I can see there's the documents folder, um, including, I'll show you here in the GUI, every, the journal and everything that was inside of there. Okay. So the dash R command is very useful. Um, all right, another command for us is what about removing files or folders? Um, and we gotta be really careful with this because remember what I said in the last part that there is no undo command in the terminal. If you make a mistake when you're removing a file or a folder, you can totally wreck your operating system to the point where you have to reinstall it. Um, I would recommend using the file manager instead um, because that way when you delete stuff, it goes in the trash and then you can get it back if you need to. Um, so do be, be careful with that. Um, that said, let's, we're still gonna focus on that. So let's um, remove rm is the remove command. Let's remove the echo demo.txt file from our home directory. So rm space echo demo.txt, and sure enough, that file is gone, um, like totally gone. So um, we're not going to get it back. Um, now we had another, you know, version of it. Uh, so we, you know, because we made a copy. But all right, let's see. Um, we copied the entire documents directory into the desktop. Let's get rid of that as well, kind of clean up from this whole tutorial here. So inside of the desktop folder is this documents folder. Um, so we're gonna use the rm command to remove the documents folder, but much like we did with the cp command, if we wanna remove the folder and everything in it, we have to use the dash r option to do so recursively. So we want to remove Inside of the desktop folder, remove the entire documents folder. And sure enough, it is gone. Um, so in this part, we learned the MV command to move or rename files or folders. We learned the CP command to copy files or folders. And even though we probably shouldn't use it, we learned the RM command to permanently remove files or folders. So now I've got three exercises for you to wrap up this section. Um, I'd like you to create a file called message.txt in your home directory and move it to another directory. Um, I'd like you to copy the message.txt you just moved into your home directory um, and then delete both copies of message.txt, but don't use RM. Do it in a safer way. So please go ahead and pause the video. And when you're done and want to check your answers, go ahead and unpause it. Um, to do so. All right, let's review these exercises. So create a file called message.txt in your home directory. Um, so I'm just going to say I'm in my home directory. I'm just going to say touch message.txt. Now I have a message.txt file in my home directory. Um, move it to another directory. All right, well, let's move message.txt into my code directory. We can see that it's gone from here, gone from the home directory, but inside the code directory. All right, second exercise, let's copy the message.txt that I moved. So it's inside of the cold folder, code folder to the home directory. There's several ways I could do this. I could say copy code.message.txt to dot slash, meaning copy it into the home directory, or tilde slash, that would work as well. Um, I think I'll do that one. 
And sure enough, now there's a copy of message.txt in the home directory, and there's still the copy inside of the code directory. And then since we wanted to delete both copies of message.txt, however, we did not want to use the rm command because it's just safer to use the file manager here. So I can click on that, right click on message.txt and I can say move to trash. I get a confirmation and everything. Inside of my code directory, I can right click and say move to trash and I get a nice confirmation. And that's a much safer option than using uh, the rm command. And there is the trash right here on the desktop if I need to recover those files. So good option there. All right, I hope this video tutorial was helpful. If you're interested in exploring more advanced commands, um, check out some of the other chapters in the Unix Workbench um, online tutorial.